Right guys, uh, the plan for tonight is to, uh, like the last times, just play like 45 minutes of Zoom, take like 10 minutes off or like 5 minutes break and then review 10 minutes and uh, do that whole thing like 3 times to get a nice number of hands in and um, yeah, have time uh, to answer questions as well. So as I, as I wrote on Twitter, as some of you have probably seen, um, can hit me up with any questions. Uh, I just watched the Triton 6 Max on the side a little. Everyone is hyped about that million tournament there. Uh, if you have questions for that one, just, just hit me up. If you have, I don't know, questions about life and whatever is on, uh, just hit me up and um, yeah, just don't don't be shy in the chat. So, why aren't you in London at Triton Series? Well, there's two things. Um, there is the big one million pound tournament, plus there is uh, all the side events. Um, and yeah, I think I just had, I, I want to decide early whether I want to try to get in the million or not. And since it was kind of hustle in the end in the million one drop last year to get the action sold and like stuff that got, that people told us about how, how great the field will be. And I mean, most of us know it turned out to be not a great field. Um, yeah, I just decided pretty early that I won't even try. Um, and I guess it would have been pretty hard for me too, since I'm not like one of those networking specialists, like um, teaming up with all the, or like with any of the pros too much. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I don't even want to know like about all the deals that happen there um, to get certain people in. And um, there's definitely lots of lots of uh, let's say negotiating going on and yeah that's not I like playing poker but it's not I do not want to connect with everyone I mean like it's like it's just not me um, and since it's not an open event I just uh, I'd rather skip it and be one of the biggest fans um, to rail it and the second part then was about well, will I go there for just the this is an interesting spot here I think I'll go for the overbet um, will I just go for the side events and there yeah I wasn't sure I had friends uh, coming over uh, or yeah plan uh, my girlfriend will come over with her best friend tomorrow to Vienna um, and yeah, so I didn't want to cancel that for just playing some side events where I have no clue how good they will be. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very happy about that choice and I'm looking forward to having a, an awesome weekend. Um, I will probably find some time to be, to be on the rail as well and to cheer for uh, some of, not my boys, but you know, like not that I have any action, but like so some, lots of friends in the tournament, so. Um, this is a fucked up card. So after overbetting the turn, I guess I have to block, probably fold that one. But yeah, that's why I'm not in London. And we got the call from 7-6 of clubs, not even jamming that bottom flush there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see bet the flop on the larger side, three-way, the big blind was in there too. And I overbet the turn like 130%, something like that. And the river is that freaking flush card. And I think it's still good enough to go for a quarter block bet. He should have like some king X still. I do want to bluff some cards there if I have like a 7-8 type of hand, 7-8 of spades, just like have the, the shot at like him folding any kind of diamonds. So uh, I want to keep that fold equity alive that I have even with a very small sizing, uh, which needs me to bet some, some hands for value too. And uh, yeah, him just calling 
the flush, I guess, is fine. His play is totally fine, obviously. Uh, but, like, gives me a good feeling about that. Like, if it's really just the, the real nuts that are jamming in my face, that's cool. Uh, this year, sometimes a call, sometimes a fold. I roll the call. Um, not really sure whether it gets better the deeper we are or it get, gets worse, but whatever. It's like either small EV or no EV is like pretty close-ish, if someone plays well. And here we have a pretty decent spot um, facing a large 4-bed with pocket aces. Um, I'm just going to flat here. Actually, that's why he looks a little value heavy, but I'm still just flatting my aces here. And this is beautiful flop. So there will be a large call button, nothing else, I guess. Interesting is if like any turn goes check, check, whether we check the river or we just put it in, uh, put it in. And yeah, this is a, I would have loved to see like a queen, king, some of his bluffing range improves, um, but still that's fine enough. Good enough for me. I have that good feeling that we have the best hand. And I like to see that bet, which is usually followed by like another river bet, let's say like 75% of the time. And yeah, cool. And I guess we still have the best hand. Not slow roll this guy, snap him off, or make sure he's all in, snap. This is not good. Okay. That's a little sad. Ace two suited flopping those trips against my aces. I think I can't get away from that hand. Oh, probably some of the Zoom guys playing right now are watching too, so welcome to all of you. Let's have some fun. I'll call for betting those tens here, that's a little on the thin line, but I'm going for cold for bet only, even that deep out of position, and um, yeah, just forces me to sometimes play pots out of position here, uh, which is fine. Uh, those pocket tens is more, I guess I can go for a range bet here. Uh, the deepness kills the solves I have in my mind a little since he might have all ace-king offsuits that he is always jamming 100 big steep which changes the king high boards quite a lot um, but still like those pocket tens is just checking is not really an option on the flop since him folding all kinds of ace queen of hearts is a big deal for me and uh, now we will check it down against uh, his 9-10 of diamonds that's the plan Okay, so far so good. I mean, might be jacks too, or like any weaker king, so. Which hands would you bluff? Seven, six, four, king with where I had six, five suited. Well, something like ace, five, for sure. Something like ace, eight suited. I can't remember positions, whether I have ace, eight suited or not. Uh, yeah, now we got that quarter pot bet that is like a thing you do not really use out of position when I'm uncapped since like It cannot gain that much EV uh, But it's opening up a door for my check jams I can't play my kings like that I can't play my nut flushes like that and I check rip them in your face Plus I can add bluffs that would lose the hands to something like your king queen so actually I have to call sometimes just to prevent you from bluffing, but my money comes from opening up a check jamming range here. And if you bet that small, I just put you on pocket queens, but I'm, I will still be calling my pocket tens with a spade here. Um, that's the thing. So ace king, um, yeah, you should always bet the turn. That's just like uh, not good. 
Um, here I started off overbetting the flop. The king is kind of his card, but I want to keep barreling with that one, so I size down a little uh, that I can pretty much put some ace queens in my range as well. Now I go for the overbet jam and um, call here. We call here. Win that one and we jam here. Fair enough, and down here we'll start betting. Uh, how deep are we? We'll make it something like that. Yes, is with poker ambition. I, I think so. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so, yeah. Do you know when DTO will be released and will there be an info banner as well? Uh, check out their their um, website. I guess all the release information is on there. Oh, let's hit a nice hand up there or get a fold. It's great. And the next interesting spot coming up. Check back now, Jam. Yeah, I'm going to call my queen high flush here, but it's that much that it's like, again, experience tells me he just always has it, especially one guy I have never seen before with like stats that look like he has it, but um, I'm not going to fold my second, a third nuts here, so. I was right, but I will always I will I will call again every single time. Checking that on back. Okay. Um, and here we um, called a three bet. He checks the flop to me, and I step thirty percent. He check calls, and now we have that nice turn card, which gives us even more options. I could keep barreling, but I won't. Mm-hmm. He's king. Uh, do you see yourself staying in Vienna for a long time? What makes the city so great? Uh, the city is awesome. Um, it's like the best city I've ever been to, I would say. Um, it's pretty much the combination of all possibilities that you have. Plus it's very all very close together in both like in the sense of literally being close together, but as well in the sense of being like connected very well. Like the, the what the fuck, like check back. If you have your, why, why? Why don't you just barrel turn if you want to get that amount of money in? Like, fuck it. I've got some flushes like that too, so I guess I will just fold my queen. I don't get it. He's watching the stream. Maybe tell me what you had. Just like checking back ace queen? The ace that doesn't make sense. Like a random ace queen? Maybe. Offset aces? No, there's like I, I can't find a bluff. Maybe like the same hand. I call sometimes. Hmm. Okay, maybe I got bluffed. Um, this is interesting. That race here. And I mean, I cannot fold, but I think not in good shape, but he can raise ace queen for value. His main raises here shouldn't actually be sets. The main race, raising range for value should be ace king. Um, which is never checking back the turn, so I feel really great about it now. And ace three, yeah, like it's like always a give up, doesn't make sense. Um, I'm going to jam. Fold, so he was just bluffing, that's great. Up here, he bets smallish on that flop and bets super large on the turn, and he's one who I got marked as someone who just always has it, but. 
Unfortunately, he could still have the same hand. And as long as he's valid betting the same hand, I'm not folding. Now it's still like that read is not that strong. It just feels like it. <laughs> His stats uh, speak a different language. It's like, I mean. I roll it, but like he just always has it. <laughs> That's, um, I mean, I'm clearly overfolding a ton here because I'm pretty much just calling the six, seven, and the like the six x of diamonds I have. But it's like I've seen enough. Yeah, roll the thirteen. So I'm can go. like this is a hand you could never ever like not never ever, but like you sh should mainly be calling. But yeah, that's a spot where I exploitively just like let it go, and I'm really happy about it. Back with a set here against him. I will sometimes roll a call, sometimes a check raise. This time we rolled a call. That's a beautiful card right there. He can barrel so much on it. He hits it quite often, he improves. And now I think pocket fives should be raising. It's not like I'm raising all my good hands, but I'm unblocking all like 10x, jack x, and everything that he's barreling has equity against my pocket fives that are super strong and nuts right now. So good luck me. King Jack, told you it was a good card, 100%. Uh, nice, like it. Um, <laughs> interesting spot. I see bet the flop. Think I should bet most the turn. Sometimes, not always. If I have a diamond, that's like a pretty clear bet. I don't have a diamond. That's a little sad. And I rolled a nineteen out of hundred, so it's a check this time. Uh, which hurts since I obviously probably get most of the pockets to fold that he is, well, he's folding some pre-flop, some on the flop, so it's like, I don't know, it's fine. I, let's let's save money against his uh, ace four suited this time. Fold, 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 check. We're down $1,188 and my computer is lagging. And we'll check some hands. So let's check that one first. Ace four of hearts versus queen eight of hearts. He checks back that board. I guess he has a mandatory C bet. Just because he does so well against all my continuing range with this peer plus non flush draw. Uh, and he's missing value on like not betting here. Uh, that turn, I have all kinds of options. There, uh, I have like a. I have all kinds of sizings on that board. Um, and the very big one is one that fits to that hand. So he obviously has an easy call. River is the flush. I guess I should size down um, that I do not polarize into flush or nothing right here. But I haven't seen that guy too often before. So I just bet a little bigger when I have the real something. Um, and then when he jams, I mean, I obviously have a bluff catcher. He shouldn't be jamming worse flushes, but People that I've never seen before and that make a flush with his with their four five of hearts or whatever, or they just have the ace four with a heart or something like that. I mean, anything can happen. There's no way I can make that exploitive fault here where I have to be good 33% of the time. So cooler right here, guys. Um, on to the next one, I guess. Um, yeah, not too much stuff. Uh, yeah, talk needed here. He four bets. We flat it, which is the standard play and the highest EV play. He binks it. And um, yeah, I mean, solve I have ace two suited is never a four bet there, but it's, I mean, deep suited ace seems reasonable. You know, like I won't blame him for having ace deuce instead of ace 
eight here, you know. So that's that's all fine. That's just another cooler that happens to me in other spots too. So then we have we got in kings versus tens. It's fine. That's a kind of a cooler for us. Tens sometimes four betting is fine. Sometimes uh, calling is better. Whatever. Then we have those fives versus king jack. Um, that's a fine play by him. Any street, nothing interesting here. That one is pretty interesting. Like that would be interesting to see how preflop ranges change. If you compare, um, I can make it a little bigger actually. No, I can't. No, this should be good. Um, how ranges change. If you check out that board for 100 BB, like this board is just so great for me since he never has ace king. He has some aces traps, but that's about it. Pocket nines, obviously, some king queen suited, but I'm just a huge favorite and I can bet 100% of my range here with like quarter pot. A little deeper is uh, more freestyle, and the thing is that he has all kinds of ace king off. Like, would be interesting to know whether he is playing with a five bet range where he plays call only, like changes the whole the whole spot quite a lot. So I went for the C bet just folding out something is good. I get called by worse that checks down. Like I was praying for the nine ten of diamonds. Um, I check that full blank on the turn and him checking back ace king does not really make sense in my eyes. Like he should play for stacks. Obviously, you can say, okay, he has the ace of spades. He doesn't need to protect if he ever wants to slow play ace king and even raise blank rivers that I might be betting. Totally fine. Like this is really, I mean, I would mainly bet it. Sometimes checking is definitely totally fine. Now he checks and he has like the clearest value of all times and he goes for that small bet, which is like where I think like, what is he doing with all his bluffs? Is he always betting those bluffs on the turn and checking that back? Well, then another part of my range is printing. Is he betting his bluffs like that? Well, then I'm printing with my pocket tens. Or, well, what's the thing? This is pretty much the only hand he can bet like that when it, that it makes sense because how much EV do you want to make, uh, make with a quarter pot bet in position where you always open up a new street? And I can definitely C bet, check call, and now check nut flushes. I can do that with pocket kings. I probably don't have knights. Um, so yeah, it's it's like mostly not worth it. Like it's just EV wise, it's really when you know I always have this hand and I'm always folding against a bigger size and I'm always calling that size, this is exploitively then great, obviously. But I wouldn't think that that's the case. Um, call it and yeah just to prevent myself from get bluffed super easily with like a, he can have ace jack of diamonds queen jack of diamonds queen ten of diamonds that sometimes bet the turn but you know what else then we have that here that that hand pocket deuces should you can raise sometimes you can fold even preflop sometimes um, check raising is fine betting large is fine three-way Turn, I guess, is a mandatory, a mandatory overbet. Uh, I would like to size up a little more, even like 135. Makes it a little nicer, charge him for all, all his equity things and not have the overbet left now. Um, and now, well, the club hits him just so well and I go for the block and I would have folded that hand. But um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Also check call down this hand here. Um, fold is okay as well like I don't know him so I always give myself a little extra V on, on later streets and like don't interpret too much in his bet sizing right here um, yeah folding is fine too I think that Jack and he keeps barreling and well I'm obviously calling nothing special here that next four bet pot is 10 suited um, yeah, I mean, we need lots of fantasy to find a fault here. Uh, mandatory call here. Now, I mean, what are like the GTO bluff four bets? 
is unfortunately something like ace queen off. You should mainly forbet that instead of calling in that spot. Some ace jack off, king jack suited, king 10, queen 10 suited, tough uh, stuff like that. And when you think about that, well, that either has me beat or has equity on that turn and keeps barreling. Like no way jack 10 is checking here or queen 10, like just no way. Um, so this check is pretty strong already and is more like kings, queens, jacks, etc. Uh, and to protect those, he should be checking most of his, his ace, king, ace, queen too on that card. So I check back. And now I guess this is clear range split because he is not betting his kings and queens and jacks. And it's tough to have enough bluffs here. If he has his king jack of nothing, great for him. Like then he owns me and I should call here. But uh, I'm happy with an exploited fold. I actually randomized like, what did I say? Like 50-50 or 30-60, something like that. I don't know. Um, so that's fine. And yeah, now we want to double check those aces there. Yeah, you guys are right. I just misread that hand. <laughs> On the river six nine nine six four six six and another six and i was like how can he keep barreling like that like he has the flush either a flush or he has like a uh boat i thought i thought it's like nine six four six eight somehow like everything getting there and not finding the bluffs i'm obviously not following my aces especially with the heart but that's the fist pump in his face uh I can jam, I can raise, I can do anything. Um, yeah, that was uh, lots of value that I missed there. <laughs> okay.